Yo, 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 yo. What's going on? This is the Don't Get Trick Podcast, and it's your boy, Big Lou. And y'all already know it's your girl in the house, Drea. <laughs> Drea, what's up? What's up? What's up, Lee? Uh, everything's going good. You have a good a holiday season so far? Of course, man. I have to get back on that diet thing because I done ate a lot of Thanksgiving food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you and me both, man. You and me both. But today we got a special guest. Uh, we'd like to bring her on, uh, Danielle Owens. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Uh, how was your holidays so far? Oh, uh, it was quiet, which is a lot different. Normally, my house is like the revolving door, so... COVID got everybody shook. We kind of just, I dipped on everybody. I just kind of went to work and then headed to a friend's house. So, yeah, nah. Yeah, it just, <laughs> COVID changes a lot of plans. Uh, it didn't stop ours this year. We had uh, not a lot of people. Uh, mm-hmm. You considered a lot of people? Mm-hmm. For our, we had friends given, so. Oh, nice. And full of people. Yeah. Okay. People we know. I made sure they came to my house, so I was like, hey, you know, I had to be out there with, hey, make sure no coughing. <laughs> I don't want none of that COVID. Well, you had to put him out his own house. <laughs> Look, you know, now somebody coughs, sneeze, everybody stop what they doing and start looking. So. <laughs> like, Rona, is that you? <laughs> yeah, right. It'd be quick, too. Like, like my, my wife always hit me, why are you coughing? I don't know. It's, it's part of life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah holidays was good man but um let's get to you know what we came uh to talk about uh and with you having you on with us uh to have this conversation uh there i know some curiosity on some things you know that you might be able to explain better to me uh and you i want you to give the people let them know a little about yourself and uh what what they can uh get from you Oh, sure. All right. So my name is Danielle, everyone. Um, I'm from New York, PK, um, empowerment speaker, minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, But I do have a very different approach from most people that you may know or see in ministry, just because um, I kind of did my thing before the Lord got a hold of me. So great testimony, but I, you know, I'm a little hood girl too. So it kind of is like the to me, it's the best of both worlds, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I do a lot of um, I do a lot of speaking engagements as of the last couple of years, um, both secular and you know ministry related. But it's been dope. It's I I can't break away from my faith. It is who I am. But then that street side of me is also who I am too. And I don't apologize for either one. So I think that kind of makes it where most people are like, oh, I like that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but yeah. I, I'm not afraid of any conversation. If I don't know something, I'm not arrogant. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, I don't, know, I don't know what to tell you. So, um, but I think that realness and that authenticity today, especially um, in black churches, yeah, you don't see it too much because everybody wants to be perfect and everybody wants to be upright and righteous. And I just, you know, that's the goal, you know, to live right and things like that. But we're human. And, and uh, mm-hmm. speaking of, having the best of both worlds, the church, and then having like that hood side of you, Mm -hmm. do you think that gives you, gives people more of a chance to like, want to like follow you with today's society? And like, just in general, like, you don't want to like, it's changed so much. Like a lot of people get uh, bored with the, uh, you know, the big church hat uh, ladies, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the traditional church people who we thought, you know, you got your church dress, you know, mm-hmm. if, they, if they get somebody giving them the gospel that sound like them, it mm-hmm. they get more with it. Oh, I 100% agree. Um, I'm not one. It, all right. So in all humility, I don't care to necessarily have like followers. Like, I don't don't look at me. Do what you got to do. And if you have questions and if we can help each other, that's fine. Um, but I do find that people are drawn to what they can relate to. Mm-hmm. If it looks attainable, then it's attractive. If it's too far fetched or too far from their reality, then most people shun away from it. And I think having that, that growing up in money earning Mount Vernon, you know, 
my dad was like one of the top basketball players in Mount Vernon during this time and having that type of culture and a lot of my friends got caught up in gun violence and a lot of my friends are in jail and then we buried a lot of you know my friends and then to to come from that environment but at the same time be unashamed about but I love the Lord you know what I'm saying like I, I just love Jesus and I can be I can be in any environment and there's always someone who's like either you're not supposed to be here or why are you here? You know what I'm saying? It's just always those two reactions when I when I'm out and about. And I don't I'm not an outdoor person. I'm a homebody, but I do understand also like, you know, we all have our own individual callings and purposes in life. And whether we agree, run from it, fully accept, you know, it it is who we are. And I think that was like the beauty of kind of coming into my own. Even now I'm still evolving, I'm still learning, I'm still figuring it out, but as much as I want to be left alone on most days, I realize that there's something about the purpose and the plan of God for my life that draws people in as much as I want to be, you know, shut down and away from everybody. And if at the end of the day, if it means that someone gets some clarity on why they're here or what they're doing or what they are, you know, can do, um, then I'll take that. I'll, I, it's a good trade off. You know what I mean? So it's also a good thing that, um, you know, that people can come to you without the judgment because they, yeah. okay, well, she's been through it or she's mm -hmm. done it as when we're in church or those church people that think they're so perfect, they're like, oh, yeah, you this, you did that. Oh, 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 you know how they be. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's another great thing that pulls people. Yeah, and, for sure. And I, I think like with me, I know when I used to go to church and it's like, you you seeing these people like you said they want to be, act, act perfect, but then and then they're they're judging you within like inside the church in itself. And mm -hmm. I think as time went on, it drew people away from it. Oh, of course, because mm -hmm. of that, you know, so I, I'm not going to this church because now I got issues with uh, Sister uh, B Bertha or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister White is always a Sister yeah, White at yeah, somebody's so. church. <laughs> you know, it, and it, it always kills me too because. I grew up in church seeing people judge the hardest in areas that they themselves have fallen. Yeah. It's like, so you, you get that too, where it's confusing. It's like, well, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to um, judge this young lady because she had a child or she got pregnant early, but you're on your fifth kid, fourth baby father. It's like, yeah. when did you become so righteous that you can't understand what this young lady is going through? I saw that a lot, a lot growing up. Like, you know, teen pregnancy and, you know, being pregnant out of wedlock and it being shunned upon and you got to be sat down and this and a third. And it's like, but you've been married 20 years and your, your oldest child is 26. Yeah. How did that, how did you get to do that? You know what I mean? Like I, I saw a lot of it. And to me, for me, that even happened with me. Like I was born in the church. Literally my dad was in ministry from the time I was born. Um, and I just had this thing where I was just like, I don't like y'all. At 18, when I left home, I was like, I'm not going to church either. Like, I don't, I don't understand it. And then a lot of my life experiences, like I've been locked up. You know what I'm saying? I sat in a jail cell. I, um, I got involved with, you know, drugs and alcohol. And I remember I was the last one of all my friends to lose my virginity. I was, to me, I was doing everything I was told not to do simply for the fact that y'all did it anyway. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to please y'all because y'all made me feel like this is the right thing to do. And something happened where I was like, but wait, this is not adding up because y'all, everybody here did the same thing. So now I'm going to do it. And if I feel like, you know, the time comes where I want to come back, I'll come back. But God is real, regardless of what man does, says, and X, Y, and Z. I know the only reason why I'm here today is because the hand of God is on my life. I should not. Yeah. Should not. So, but regardless of what anybody in any position in church says, thinks, or feels about me, um, my loyalty is to my faith and my faith alone. Like, it, it's him, not y'all. I don't do this for y'all, and I don't do this for play. And that's, I think, another portion of, like, ministry that I think people find attractive is because I'm not going to say what you want me to say. If the Lord didn't tell me, if, if it ain't in Scripture, I'm not, I'm, it's not going to come out of my mouth, and I stand by that. I'm not quick. I don't care about the crowd. I don't care about who's watching. I don't care about your money, how much you're offering. I'm not, I'm just, my loyalty is not to you. 
And it's not to money. It's to the one who saved me. That's priceless. I can't, can't take that from me. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I watched, uh, I don't know. Is that like a testimonial that you did on YouTube? Uh, which one? Uh, it, it was about uh, where you said basically uh, you didn't love yourself enough. Oh yeah, yeah, the true love one, yeah. Yeah, the true love. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, this season, you know, it's all about you know relationships, uh, mm -hmm. uh, marriage, uh, loving yourself, and everything, and your family, and mm -hmm. all that. So what you went through, it helped end up bringing you back closer to God. Yeah. To help you get that self love. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, so I grew up in a house full of boys. I have nothing but brothers. And, um, again, my dad's a pastor, my mom's first lady. And I think a lot of my validation growing up was based upon what people told me I was supposed to be, what I'm supposed to do, who I'm supposed to date, how I'm supposed to move, how, you know. Um, there was a, 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 person, a persona that I took on being the pastor's daughter and the only daughter where it was like, oh, I bet she's spoiled. I bet she's this. And I played into that. Meanwhile, I felt so disconnected to everybody around me. But if y'all thought that, you know, that worked for me. So, and then it trickled down into a lot of my relationships where it was like, even if you give me the bare minimum, any little bit of attention was like, this is great. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and the bare minimum, like praising men for doing nothing, you know, just for being there. And I did that for, oh my gosh, I, I was willing to trade it all just to have, just to say that I was with someone, you know what I mean? And it didn't help that even the men in ministry dating pastors now and they they worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is I, how do you win? <laughs> and you you see it on TV and uh and I I've witnessed it. They always say like the the children of the like the pastors and stuff is like the you know the worst. And then the even like the parents that's uh really into church like their kids end up wanting to act out because they were so strict on them, making them go church all the time. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, like I said, it affects them because now you've been, you've been keeping me with these uh, constraints on and now mm -hmm. I'm here and then I get this freedom. Well, I'm gonna go over here, especially yeah. the way to college, you know, mm -hmm. they're gonna, now I got it. I'm not away. I'm away from my parents. I get to explore this a little more. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I think that, so um, we talk about this all the time in my house where my siblings and I, though we grew up together under the same roof, we are all completely opposite. Like we couldn't be any more different. Um, my oldest brother, he's a minister as well. He's the most like my dad, like very rigid, just you don't have to worry about Marcus. You know what I'm saying? That's my oldest brother. And then my brother, Aaron, he and I are probably the most alike. Aaron's the, the little playboy. He's out running the streets, doing everything, you know. Um, my little brother is just kind of like the golden child, you know. And then you have me, who's just kind of like, not rebellious. I wouldn't say that's the word, but I've, I'm coming into my own. And I think to some people that feels, uh, it may feel like it's a little bit rebellious because there's always been this, this is how she's supposed to be. And I'm just, I'm so free and good with me that, I don't really care to prove anybody wrong or right and at that point. Um, but everybody has their own path to walk. But I will say that for a large part, I think part of my um, my rebellion when I did decide, well, I'm leaving home and I'm going to do what I want, came from the fact that everyone thinks I'm bad anyway. I wasn't a bad child by no means. You know what I mean? Like I, I straight A student and was afraid of crowds that were rowdy for the most part growing up. Um, but when you constantly hear like, oh, PK kids are worse, like I just know. And then there's this, people treat you as if they know that you are what they have made you to be in their head, you know? Um, so part of the rebellion is that too. It's if you think the worst of me anyway, and I'm not doing anything, I might as well live up to what, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I definitely, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough for any, and that's whether you're a, a parent or, um, a child of a pastor or someone in ministry or your, your mother's just 
religiously in church every Sunday, every service, midweek service, Sunday school, like it doesn't matter. There's a certain um, level of comfort that people have in hiding in church yeah. because a person who sits in church may not be transformed by the word of God. It may just be their religion to be present. You know what I mean? But there's no change because if you're in church every Sunday, but you go home and you're still cursing your kids out for every little thing, then there's a disconnect. You know what I'm saying? And outward appearance to some people mean more than, than the heart. And that's another one that I kind of had to, um, sorry about that, y'all. Um, that's another thing that I kind of had to, I had to learn as well. I, I definitely had to learn that as well. And, uh, and I asked you both this, uh, and what the importance of self love, uh, when it comes to relationships, like Drea, tell, tell us like, what, what, how do you feel that uh, carries your marriage? And uh, and then you can tell me how it is, you know, uh, you get in a relationship, but just having yourself love. And then once I talk about it, I, you know, give my. Uh... So for me, um, self love has always been a big thing for me. Um, I've always loved myself. I've always. I was always happy with my accomplishments and um, I don't know, it's just, I've always had that confidence in myself and that love for myself um, is definitely needed in order to, you know, like you said, before you can love anybody else, you have to love yourself. Um, I know you said that in one of your, 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 um, your shows. So it's like, that's absolutely true because if you once once you get into a relationship with someone you can't expect to to like have downfalls about yourself but you you ready to love you know someone else because it's not going to work so honestly you can call it selfish or whatever i love myself more than i will ever love a man because I, it has to start with myself. Like I have to love myself in order to give the good love to the another person, another person that I love. So it's it's always it's always been there for me. I've never had a problem with it. Um, yeah, I mean, and I'm and I guess it made me arrogant to the point where I'm like, you know, well, if you don't love this about me, I'm not changing it. If you don't love it, you can leave. Like, this is how I am. And if you don't like it, then, oh, well. Like, I'm not changing it for nobody. This is what I'm satisfied. This is me. So, and like, to this day, with my husband, I tell him, like, it's, it's some things. When we first got together, he, he was like, oh, you know, this and that. I think you need to work on this and that. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> uh, it's a difference between some things that you could change to better yourself, then it's some things that, that is you that right. you're going to change about yourself. So mm -hmm. I had to let him know, listen, this is me. I'm not, afraid of, I'm not afraid of being who I am. I love who I am. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to deal with it. I'm not forcing you to deal with it. You can leave. You see, he chose to stay and he married me. So, uh, of course, <laughs> <laughs> You got with the program. So, yeah. He might be rethinking that. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope, though. That's dope. A lot of women find that out way too late, you know, and they, they transform in the eyes of whatever men they're with, and they never learn who they are. You know what I mean? Because you're so drawn to being, uh, to the idea of having someone that you become who the person wants you to become to keep them. And, and I think the dangerous part about that is because you're going to change anyway. Like we're constantly evolving. We're constantly changing. Life constantly forces us to, to adapt. Right. So like who you are in the, as much as you love yourself and you're confident in who you are in the beginning of the relationship or when he met you, you were this way. And even though you're not changing for him, you'll find that certain things about you will change during the duration of the relationship. And you have to be secure enough in yourself and in your relationship to trust that the person one is going to respect you and how you evolve, but also who's not going to leave because things got a little different. People are allowed to change. People are allowed to evolve. People are allowed to grow. And we cannot keep them in a place where it's more beneficial for us when they, people are not property. You know what I'm saying? 
Right. And two, I think sometimes we, we get confused with that too. It's like, oh, okay, well, well, I remember when you used to do X, Y, and Z. And it's like, yeah, I did that. But now I'm over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to keep your individuality while you're in a relationship. And I, that's something that my, the, my ex actually just taught me. It was like, yo, I, I'm cool with you being an individual. You don't have to serve me. You don't have to give me all of it. You don't have to give me all. I like what I get. I like what you offer. But at the same time, I've admired the woman you were before you were with me. That Don't change that. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's important to hear as a woman, too, because it's like, okay, so you don't require all of this. Like, no, I don't. But it's not about what I require. It's about who you are. Right. Thank you. I needed that. Like, <laughs> take the pressure off of me. Yeah. Hey, you know? Yeah, and, and I'll give uh, my perspective of a man. It, uh, one, I'm very, uh, I don't know, I got high self-esteem. Uh, mm -hmm. Very confident in myself, uh, not overly cocky. I understand uh, my limits, but I still try to push past it. I, I have two daughters that's now in the dating world, uh, 14 and 15. You know, and we talked about on the show before, you, them asking, like, can I start dating is a uh, whole different ball game. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I try to express to them, and I, you know, because I also got uh, younger sisters. And I always mm -hmm. express to, from my younger sisters to my daughters uh, about loving yourself and not having a, ha having a man to make you feel like love uh, is, is what you need to establish first. You know, because, you know, a man, one, I always make sure they know, like, if he can't treat you as good or better than I am, it, it probably ain't worth it. But mm -hmm. you need, mm -hmm. uh, him to build you up you got to build yourself up and then that's going to carry you within the relationship as long as you feel confident because you know guys sometimes they can run game mm -hmm. oh, they, oh if you ain't got high self-esteem they, they put you down and then that's drawing you closer to them because now you feeling like oh i can't go this way or that way because i'm, I'm not I'm not good looking and our, you know, our this and that, you know, everyone got their own beauty as long as you could trust and love yourself. Right. But like I said, that's got to be something you do. I could tell it to you, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a, like I said, I'll lead you to the water. You got to drink it, you know? So with my daughters, I'm hoping they absorb it and then they, they get it. And, and you know, like, Hey, my father told me like, I love myself. I'm confident in what I bring to the table, you know, mm -hmm. and what, if he's not bringing that same thing, it's okay, you know, and I just move on to the, you know, to someone that is there with me. But like I said, with me, I'm definitely uh, loving myself. So <laughs> I definitely, uh, and uh, another uh, thing too, like, so is it fair, like if a, if a man, like let's say a woman not feeling like pretty and uh is she just not loving herself is is that too much pressure or you know on a man if, if then he feel bad that he can't pick it up or like how, how would you how would you how would a man help a woman work through that is basically what i'm saying it just depends on what what type of man is it because some men they feed off of that and mm -hmm. and they um they like that because they like oh I can make her do what I want like I have um a, a friend quick story a friend that um has very low self esteem um and like you know she dropped out of school blah 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 and her her dude made her feel like she was the prettiest girl in the world she was in and he made her feel like she was no, nobody like nobody would want her although she's a very beautiful girl she just don't you know she just messed up in places yeah. so be, being that she slack in different places he was able to manipulate her and make her feel like she's just low she's she's you know ugly nobody wants her she's dumb blah 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 and when i see it and i guess god put me in her life for a reason because when i seen it i'm like girl don't one thing I, I've learned, don't never let a man take care of you because then they feel like they own you. They feel like mm -hmm. they own you. No. And I'm telling her because she just sit at home and let him work and all this. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Go make your own money so that you can 
you can leave whenever you want. Like right. the settle for this man talking to you like this or this man treating you like this. So I feel like, you know, it's just depending on what dude. Now, if it's a genuine dude. Yeah, yeah. let's let's talk about the good man. <laughs> <laughs> The the one that's trying to build. The, we have uh, to talk like, about both because like, nah, you are a queen. <laughs> we do have. Build her up. We have we people are. out there experiencing both. Now, for the people that has a good dude that that mm -hmm. wants to build you up, um, I feel like it'll be easier for the woman because she has the support. So if he's telling her every day, "Baby, you just look so beautiful. Baby, you just so smart." Like just sitting up there complimenting her and making her feel like she's the best in the world, I guarantee her, her self-esteem will rise because she has that support from him. So it won't be as hard on him as it would, you know, someone else that's not trying to compliment their person or build that yeah. person up. Yeah, I agree. I also agree that um, when you're talking about like a good dude that's like trying that sees the potential in a woman that she may not see for herself. Um, I think if I can give advice to that guy, it would also be like, let's say the issue is she just doesn't feel pretty. She has low self-esteem. I believe this is just my, my revelation with people. I believe we are all like trees, right? And branches produce the fruit, right? Um, but the tree is rooted in the ground by its roots. A lot of times the fruit that we see, whether it's good fruit or bad fruit, um, if it's bad fruit, like if it's low self-esteem, um, a lot of times we just pick at the low self-esteem and we just take that off the tree, not realizing that the root of the low self-esteem could be rejection. It could be um, uh, rebelliousness. It could be, it could be so many different things. And sometimes when you only deal with the fruit, um, any farmer or any person who works in, 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 in the ground will tell you that uh, when you take fruit from a tree, it just produces more fruit. So you're not dealing with it at the root of the issue. If you need something taken out, you gotta, you got to uproot something. So a lot of times, to me, it's understanding, well, why do you feel that way? Why is your self-esteem so low? Because I can encourage you all day, but that may only give you a little bit, like in this season, like you're, you're thriving and you're flourishing, but then something happens, something triggers you and you're right back into again. Now it becomes redundant where I constantly have to pick you up, but that's no man's job. It's not the man's job to build a woman. It's only the man's job to support the woman. And if I'm only beneficial in telling you what to do right here, but I'm not dealing with the underlying issue or you're not dealing with the underlying issue because whatever the root is, is still there. It's going to continue to grow no matter how much you try. And I feel like, that's the, the sad part about a lot of relationships that have the potential to be great, why they end. Because too often we're only dealing with surface issues and we don't understand the root of the matter. And when you don't understand the root of the matter, it grows, the relationship grows stale so fast because it's like, I shouldn't have, eventually, I grew up with men. After a while, they get tired of hearing themselves. So mm -hmm. it's only going to be so much before a man is like, she's just not getting it. And the potential that this relationship had to be beautiful the opportunity is lost because we, we, we dealt with the wrong issue at hand. But if this person felt wanted, forget telling her every day. Cause again, it can go in, she might get cute a couple days. And then after that, it's like, no, something happened. Somebody told me I was ugly. Somebody told me why I had that on. Boom. Back to square one, you know? But when someone feels secure in a relationship, a man that can make a woman feel secure. And that's not because he has money and she doesn't. That just makes, like, if a woman can look at the man that she's with and be like, yo, this dude got my back. Like, he's not going nowhere. His character speaks for himself. Sometimes when the man is who he is and he's secure in himself, it allows a woman the freedom to be free and the freedom to just be secure in herself. It didn't make her that way. It just gave her permission or gave her the safe space to become that, knowing that somebody had her back. You know what I'm saying? Because this men who are abusers can talk a good game. It's the charismatic um, personality, right? So the same man that's beating on her behind closed doors to everybody else, but he's buying her furs and he's taking her out and he's flying her out. So on the surface, it looks good, but the root of the issue is when nobody else is there. But again, a man's character. And 
I'm not one to say like, oh, we need men, this and a third. I'm not a feminist by no means, but also I'm not one to minimize who we are as women either. And the big fat Greek wedding, my mom's favorite line, and I, literally like the older I get, the more I realize it. Um, they said there was a line or something that said, you know, the man is the head of the household, but the woman is the neck that turns the head. Mm-hmm. And it establishes just how important both men and women are. However, as long as their security and that team is there, then you can literally get the best out of whoever you're with. The, just like the man can make a woman secure enough to have the permission to grow and be who she is, is the same way a man will look at his woman and be like, yo, I can't slip up. Like, I got a go woman on my side. I think that's, if a relationship doesn't do that, if it doesn't make you feel like you're free to be the best version of you, then why are you there? If I have to grow you and make you and teach you how to be you, then who are you, who are you when I'm not around? You know, you don't want that type of dependency. You know what I'm saying? And again, it just goes back to your individual self and learning how to, how to operate as a group. But for any man that's with a woman who he loves and he sees the potential woman, but she has these issues, it's going to take some like deep work of just figuring out, but why? I would always just be free to have that conversation as to why, because you'd be surprised. Some people are holding stuff in that they never felt like they had the permission to talk about childhood traumas, you know, um, you know, the, the, the relationship between her and her mom, the relationship between her and her dad, you know, uh, things that happened as a child that she never told anybody. And meanwhile, we think it's just low self-esteem, but it's like, no, you gotta, you really gotta heal from that though. Like that's, you ain't never said that. Like, and you, and you see, uh, which is a, a good thing that in today's day and age, a lot more people are being more self-aware of mental health. Oh yeah, and seeking out people to talk to. There's still some people that still think they're too strong to uh, let it out or to go talk to people. Uh, and but seeing a, a, a psychiatrist and just to to let it out, you know, because a lot of people, especially like I know my generation, nah, I'm tough. I just hold it in and mm-hmm. bury it and move on. But then yeah. airing it and it's just keep building up, building up. And uh, like I said, it, it's a, a lot more awareness of that uh, self-esteem. But what I want to get, so it's 2020. We talked about, you know, the, the old church uh, ladies with the big hats and <laughs> that. So with, uh, th- things are different in 2020. You know, obviously we barely could go outside. Right. But also, you know, with the religion thing, and we mm-hmm. talked a little bit about it, you know, on our phone mm-hmm. call, uh, like, are you seeing less religion in relationships today? And especially, like I said, you have those people that that saying they're more spiritual than they are religious. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's, it's, it's something that uh, I, I had, you know, the question of it, I'm like, you know, I see less, like I said, back in the day, it's always that if a, a family that prays together stays together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you can hear it every once in a while, but you don't see it as much. Right. You no. Know? And you just think times is changing or what, what changed, you know, to make it that. And, uh, you know, you could go back to like how your parents, you know, were met and then, you know, your grandparents and they were deep you know, we were the church was all used to always be first, you know, it was always mm-hmm. God first, then the, my family, you know, and, you know, just things start to shift more, you know, not, not with everyone, but, you know, people still have put God first, but yeah, sometimes, sometimes people just say it to say it and not, they don't got the action behind it. Exactly. Exactly. One thing I will say is that the way I've seen relationships, so I'm gonna have a lot of peers that are that are married and they're married in the church. Um, But I think before we can discuss how relationships and religion have changed, we have to first discuss how the church changed. So church, when our parents was growing up, is not necessarily the way church is now because now we're a generation of like information seekers. So like before, and I'm not saying that this was the case all the way around, but we came from an era where you didn't really question things in church. You just did as you were told. Remember, religion is, a, is really based upon discipline, right? So it's like, okay, well, this is how this church runs. And you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to shack up. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do this, right? So people didn't question that. They just did it. Now, again, in this information age that we're in, it's like, 
I know this is how church used to be. However, why can't it work like this? And the problem that the church had is when the information came, I think a lot of pastors and preachers were ill-equipped to handle the questions because they were so used to doing things without being questioned. And so you have a church now that is, um, well, let's go back to the first part. People saying, you know, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. The problem that I have with that is before you can be spiritual, you have to have some religion. As a believer, if you're, if you're Christian, you don't know how, what it is to be spiritual without the discipline of religion. Now, has religion, ha- have people abused religion? Absolutely. Just like anything else that has been abused. Um, but n- you still need the foundation of religion to help you into your spiritual walk. You know what I mean? So it's like understanding the do's and the don'ts. Now, people use spirituality as a way or as a means to fulfill whatever feels good to them, not necessarily what lines up with the religion that they say that they're a part of. Everybody knows God, but everybody doesn't know what he stands for. You know of him, but you don't have relationship with him. And that makes a, a, a great, a very great difference. So when it comes to like relationships in religion or relationships in church, I do see a lot of it. Um, maybe not as much as my parents did when they were growing up. But um, I think a lot of it really has to do with the fact that um, the church is not, the church is just now evolving to be able to handle the questions and the whys and why can't we live together before we're married? Boom. Before it was just don't do it, but why not? You know what I mean? And so now you got these questions coming along and you just have to be really grounded in the word of God because that spiritual part now will then convict you and lead you and guide you in a way that's pleasing unto God. Um, but as far as like families and that, I don't think that that has changed You know, a family that prays together, stays together. I think it's just a matter of understanding what is prayer? Why do we pray? What are we trying to get out of prayer? You know, what does the Bible say about the thing that we're praying about? You know, so a lot of that comes from the religious aspect of disciplining yourself in the word. So that's how I feel about it. Right. So um, I guess my input on it is back in the day, our parents, like she said, it was, you know, they grew up in church differently. Not only that, our parents were like, the backbone for the men like it was like you know they were oh they just stay at home wives they did everything for their men it was no arguments so the relationship you know last and stayed together they stayed together longer whereas now women are coming more independent they're mm-hmm. they're they're trying to be well we are you know like men we feel like oh they can do it we can do it too yeah that mindset now where it 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 didn't change now um so i feel like that's one reason why you know relationships nowadays are totally different than the relationships that our parents had um with Mm -hmm. a side of being religious and spiritual i feel like that's great one of one of the main things now now when it come to uh getting into a relationship does uh do you how do you weigh like the religious aspect of it like what if they got different like what if it's different religion you're christian that person muslim or that person like you know like does it come a point like oh i can't do this because we don't got the same faith or how how would that work so for me um I wouldn't be able to take outside of my religion only because I can't be separated from my faith. You know what I mean? Like no matter, even if I try, I can't, it's just in me. It's just how I view things. It's my beliefs. And I think, you know, the Bible says it and the Quran says it too, in a different way. I'm going to paraphrase it, but it says something like, you know, how can two walk together except they agree? You know what I mean? If we believe two different things, we can't walk the same path. It's, It's impossible because you're looking in this direction and that's the way, that's the area that you're headed in and I'm looking in this direction. Um, so how do we walk together if we're going too different? You know what I mean? And that's not a bad thing. Um, but when we're talking about romantic relationships and building a family, I think these are the conversations that are very important to have because no matter how much I like you and I like being around you, when we start talking about the nitty gritty of life and what it means to go into covenant, um, to spend someone's life together, to then build and expand life and to have children, 
Um, that's a hard conversation to have. I mean, people do it. People do it. Me personally, I it would be difficult for me. I had, it I would be friend, me. I had a friend that converted to Mormon for his wife. Uh, I see. I never got into like a conversation with him about it. And, mm-hmm. like, you know why? What made him want to do it? Um, mm-hmm. uh, convert into being a Mormon. Um, yeah. How how would that work for you if? Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't know. I never had someone approach me that was a different religion. Um, growing up, I was heavy in the church and, you know, I was Christian. Well, I am Christian. Um, I practiced it more. Like I, I walked more of it when I was growing up because I was forced to go to church Forced, And not only that, even when, when I was a teenager or, an uh, an adult an early adult in my 20s um I still walked the faith I still went to church on my own and I still I was into church heavy you know praise dance and stuff but I just never um as I grew older I just I don't know like I never had that approach with someone that's different from me Mm -hmm. so it's like and I share uh and, and we just talked about it last night, I, I, me and my wife. And uh, it's something that we always had to issue it. So my wife's first language is, is Spanish. She's from Dominican Republic. Mm-hmm. Uh, she speaks English, uh, but I don't speak, I speak very little uh, sp- Spanish. Mm-hmm. So it comes down to, she want to go to church. We want to go to church together, but she wants to go to uh, where they speak just Spanish. Mm-hmm. If I go with her, I don't know what they're saying. Like, <laughs> right, right. He, uh, you know, offered my son uh, to to God at a Spanish church. I ain't have a clue what they're saying. I'm just in there, like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> <laughs> like staying here. You know, uh, you know, they had a translator too, but it's like they ain't, they ain't gonna have a translator for me every time I go to. Right, you know? right. And then she come to you know a church I'm interested in. She don't. It don't it don't hit her the same like so we're not we can't get the word together because it's on two different languages and yeah. stuff and so that's a that's a uh, situation we got to try to work out like how you know how can we able to go as a family mm-hmm. and then still be able to feel it because like I said because of her language you know we watch Netflix she got to have subtitles because sometimes they talk too fast in English mm-hmm. for it and stuff and like I said she talked good English it's just first language is Spanish and that's what she can right. to this country speaking and stuff. So that's, that's one issue. Like I said, we just talked about it last night. Yeah, I got to move to the Bronx. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to come down to the Bronx and hit one of them churches that have, you know, the Spanish service person. And the English service. They, they, they start talking Spanish and halfway through they sent back to English. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like my husband, he, when I met him, he of course was, he told me he was Christian, but my part with him was trying <laughs> to get him to, uh, I guess, attend church because he's like, he's one of those that's like, the past to be the ro- worst ones. Like, yeah, you know, I get a lot of them up here too. They, but they doing this and they doing that and this mm-hmm. and that. And I'm like, okay, but that's not every pastor, you know? Right. You, right. You know, we have to get the word some way. And I feel like, like now that COVID, like before COVID, you know, I tried to get him. Well, we started going to church. We found us a new church home. Well, not really a new church home, but we did visit a church that I liked a little. Um, and I was taking him, you know, telling him, okay, this is, we need to get back into it. This is what I'm used to. This is what I come from. And my thing with him is we'll be driving in the car and it's on Sunday. I love listening to gospel. No matter what day it is, I just love gospel. And he like. Uh-huh. Cut that off. I don't like, I don't like to hear that gospel. I'm like, why? Like, he's like, don't get me wrong. I believe in God and I love God and all this, but it's just some songs. I just don't like, I only like certain gospel songs. So I'm like, yeah, I hear that. I hear that too. Like anything that sounds too R and B, it's like, nah, if I'm going to listen to gospel, I'm listening to gospel. I want some, you know, some Shirley Caesars, uh, take me to the King, something, you know, like, um, but, be in school. I find that too. I find that too with a lot of people today. Like it's like, why do I have to go to church again? Back to that, I'm I'm not religious. I'm spiritual because they feel closer to God without going through a third party or through 
the church or a pastor because they feel like, and I, I understand, trust me, I, like I said, growing up in church, I'm not just saying it's because he's my dad. He's one of the very few um, pastors that I know that you, his name is clean. Unfortunately, I mean, every time you turn on the news, some other mega pastors, especially black men pastors, are in some type of scandal. So you can't, I, I, my heart goes out to those people because what you're really telling me by saying I don't, you know, have these pastors out there is that you're really, to me, what I hear is, you know, you're disappointed because how are you supposed to learn if the teacher is failing? You know what I'm saying? And I have compassion towards that because I get it. I get it. It's hard to learn to sit under someone's doctrine when they're saying one thing and doing another. How do I know that this is attainable if the one who's telling me can't do it? So it 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 it, it kind of it, it's discouraging, you know. So I I come I completely understand. Um, but I think the basis of all of that is, you know, we're all human. That's not to excuse anybody's behavior or sh- shortcomings. Um, but one of the <clears throat> one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible comes from Apostle Paul where he says, you know, in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. The good that I want to do, I don't do. And the very thing I say I'm not going to do is the thing I keep doing over and over again. But then he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who can save me from this flesh? It's nobody but Jesus. So there's the faith right there, right? It's like before I depend on someone else to tell me what to do, Apostle Paul, who wrote two thirds of the new chapter and the, the very gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, that we live in the New Testament covenant that we're under, he himself said, the good that I want to do, I don't do it. And the thing I say I swore I wasn't going to do is what I end up doing. I understand, though, that everything I need is caught up in Jesus. Like, he's the only one who's going to save me. So before we start depending on man to teach us, we also have to understand that put put pastor, elder, deacon, everybody aside, I'm supposed to be following Christ. You know what I'm saying? He is my example because he's the one who didn't fall short. He's the one who said that if I fall, he can forgive me. Not the pastor who said, oh, well, you got caught messing around on your wife, so you can't come here or you can't be involved in that. Jesus didn't do that to anybody in the scripture. You know, so I think it's, you know, a matter of turning the tables a little bit and changing the perspective from understanding who man just flushes versus actually understanding the heart of Christ. And once we get past that, we'll look at people with a different lens. We don't give people the same power and authority over our lives. And we'll understand that not that certain behaviors are inexcusable, but if he can forgive me for the things that I've done and I'm still here and he's still working with me, listen, I'm praying for that pastor that I can't stay in his wife's bed, him and his wife's bed. But at the same time, you are not my... You know, you, you can't, how can you help me when you're hurting? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, and to me, I'm scared of anybody who preach Sunday after Sunday very arrogantly and then turn around and live like hell because woe unto them. You know, I don't want that attached to my name, so I stay clear of it. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it's like, I understand that we're all human. Nobody's perfect. No matter how bad you try to be perfect, you know, no matter how much you try to walk up rightly. It's just that this, this flesh is supposed to keep us at the cross. You know what I mean? Forget the church at the cross, like at the feet of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But again, you don't know that without religion. That's the spiritual side that people claim that they're a part of, but they don't know. A lot of people don't know. They don't know what they say. It just sounds good. Um, but it could be good for you if you understood the religious side before you kind of, you know, do that aside first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and and what, what I would say about... Because I, you know, I used to say that too a lot. I don't say it as often uh, when when we talk about uh, you know, oh, the people in church or the pastors, you know, they would be the worst. That's a lot. That's like think of think of where we we come, you know, as black people. If we saying, well, you know, those black people, they always gonna rob us. Not everyone, every not every black person, right? Is, so not every pastor is gonna be bad. There you go. You know, it, it's bad. It's bad apples and all walk you know so it, you can't help it you know? yeah and agree and that was good even then they might have a certain thing but their their intent when they're given their word is still mm-hmm. probably pure yeah it's exactly just, like said we're human so it, it sometimes temptation even tempts you know the highest especially especially and, and yeah 
and uh, you always get you know especially with the, a lot of the, a lot of the examples probably most of the time is more with the catholic church and their priests you know and that's where that's where people get in and looking on tv when we watching greenleaf and stuff and you see yeah. them in there you know that that also brings a bad uh, you know name uh, to the church yeah you know yeah. i don't know man <laughs> pastor greenleaf was was wilding out there <laughs> But and like, we was tuned in every week, like, what's about to happen? <laughs> but like you say, as long as they're preaching a the word from out the Bible, what God, yeah. God wanted us to know, and then I guess that's the most important part of it all. So, Yeah, the word will do the work. That's one thing my dad always taught us. It's like, regardless of who the vessel is, the word of God doesn't need approval from man. No matter whose mouth it comes out of, his word is true. You know, let every man be a liar, but... His word is true. So sometimes God will put us under certain leadership and put us in certain churches and we may not never be a member there, but God will use that man or woman of God to speak directly to our situation. So even that alone should tell us no matter what anybody is doing or what's going on around us, if the Lord wants your attention, he will get it by any means necessary. Yep. So uh, make sure we should be putting God first within our, our relationships and yeah. within us. You know, yeah. Put God. Uh, we also established, you know, Danielle thinks me and my wife should be moving to the Bronx. <laughs> Church. <laughs> oh my goodness. It'd be good if, if, the, if the winters was like Florida up there, but I'm, I'm good. I know, I know, I know, yeah. Yeah, how are the winters in Florida? How cold does it get? It, well, it could get down to like 35. Really? I haven't yeah. been like that in the. No, it, it'd in be a like, no, it'd be like January, like when you come out in the morning, but it'd be back up to like 60 in the in the evening. But Oh, nice. But it, like 35 be like, the, it, you come out like, like oh my, it's cold. <laughs> I got to turn my heated seats on. <laughs> you know, uh, my homeboy just came from White Plains visiting. And, you know. Oh, really? Oh, I'm, I live in White Plains now. Okay. Never mind. Offset. <laughs> My bad. Hey, but uh, I've been tell, I've been telling people like, yo, it get chilly in Florida. Like, and they, they wow. like, they brought because you know they used to New York weather. Yeah, right. But so they it'd be like, uh, oh, not chilly. What's chilly? I'm like, yo, sixty uh seven over here. Like, boy, I take that because it's thirty something up there. Of course, <laughs> right, right. But I'm like, yeah, I gotta think. Sixty something in Florida when we used to ninety something. Right. Yeah, right. Pretty different. So yeah, right, right, right. That's true. That's true. So yeah, definitely we we appreciate having you, and we love. Oh, thank you. you that you shared with us today. And uh, do you have anything else uh, you can add for? Um, no. I just know we have to do better now with. <laughs> Which I always knew. I always knew, you know, God need to be the head of our relationship in order for it to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as soon as COVID is done, I, I think I can start back going to church. <laughs> well, you, got, you ain't got to wait because they got virtual. They, they got yeah, right. <laughs> Not the same. I have to be there in the, in, in yeah. the, to actually feel the Holy Ghost. You hear? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that on virtual. <laughs> Do you have anything for us? Oh, uh, no. It was just so good to be here and to have this conversation with you guys. This was good. I, I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I don't know you want to let people know how they could find you. On oh, yeah, yeah. I'm on IG mostly. So, Daniela Maris. That's Danielle, A-M-A-R-I-S. Um, and then you can also search Daniela Maris on YouTube for uh, a couple videos, little blogs that I've done. So, yeah, hit me up. Okay, and you got Mrs. Dot members on IG, uh, LA the King three. Uh, then we got Don't Get Tricked, uh, our IG. Uh, we got our website also coming soon. www.dgt. Uh, is it DGT? Don't yeah. <laughs> Tpodcast.com. <laughs> uh, and like I said, we we appreciate uh, having you. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes, and with thank that, you for we, coming. We thank everyone for listening to the Don't Get Tricked podcast. Thank you, and we out. Peace. Peace.